I've talked a lot in the last few weeks about the migrant issue. I'm not going to repeat the things I've said in past weeks. Let me give you an update of where we are today. As it stands now, we're about five weeks, maybe six weeks, uh, since uh, Mayor Adams of New York City began the process of trying to site some uh, housing outside of the boundaries of the city of New York. We have two placements now. That's one more than we had a week ago. We have two placements of uh, those uh, migrant asylum seekers here in Westchester County. The original placement of a couple of weeks duration now in Yonkers at uh, the Ramada, which has been renamed the Plaza Esperanza the, the uh, hope, uh, dream areas that represented by that. Uh, there has been uh, an allocation of 58 guest rooms. <clears throat> the, occu the occupied number of rooms uh, is not always static, but uh, right now there's 58 rooms that have been set aside. Uh, there are 55 families, uh, total number of people, about 160 people, primarily adults, about half as many children. The children that have been targeted in both of these two locations are preschool age children, so they're not yet uh, necessary to provide an education function for them. In the Yonkers location, <clears throat> the West Tab Incorporated organization, CEO Rich Nightingale, uh, has been um, contracted by the city of Yonkers to help provide certain local services that the city is providing. And the county, which is working with the city, as we are in White Plains in a complementary fashion, is working with the advice and assistance of Neighbors Link out of Mount Kisco to provide some of these services. You should know that the countries of origin of these migrant asylum seekers are not simply Latin American countries. They do involve the countries of Latin America, Venezuela, Colombia, uh, Honduras, Ecuador, um, Brazil, Mexico, Nicaragua, but they're also including individuals in this location who have sought asylum and approached America through the southern border from Afghanistan, from Turkey, from Romania, from Kyrgyzstan, from uh, Russia, from China, from uh, uh, other parts of the world as well, uh, Romania, uh, Nigeria, Trinidad, Tobago. And in each of those different areas, these uh, folks speak a variety of languages, which makes our management task a little bit more difficult. We all understand that uh, Spanish is the language of Latin America, and, and that largest cohort of immigrants come from Latin American, Spanish-speaking countries. But some of the immigrants here speak French, Russian, Farsi, Turkish, Portuguese, Cantonese, and Romanian. So we have a managerial challenge in working effectively uh, with those groups. That is at the Yonkers location. It's about three weeks, roughly speaking, in duration. Uh, as of last night, uh, we received, uh, actually it's Sunday night into Monday, we received uh, uh, a second uh, placement of individuals at a hotel in the borders of White Plains located on Central Avenue. 16 rooms are currently occupied. The block, I think, is for 29 rooms. It's 46 people. They're all families with young children. And uh, as you heard, Mayor Roach, uh, we're interacting as we do with Mayor Spano and Yonkers. We're interacting with Mayor Roach in White Plains to provide similar services. Uh, to make sure that we manage this as effectively as we can. Uh, we know that we've got a lot of work to do ahead of us, and of course, I will repeat this portion of it so that you know that it is very much on our mind. There is a problem in our immigration system. It can only be solved by federal action. The federal administration and the Congress still have, have failed to sit down, assess the demand that's coming at our border, and how to manage or handle that demand in some effective way. Absent that, those individuals who have come into the country legally sought asylum have to be assessed to determine if they are warranted getting asylum or not. That process has been too long and too laborious. So while they're waiting for their cases to be adjudicated, they stay at the border, which has created a tremendous crisis along the southern border. And uh, particularly in Texas, although it's not immune in Arizona, New Mexico, and California as well. The governor of Texas, Governor Abbott, uh, has determined that he was going to put some number of migrants on buses and send them uh, outside of Texas. Now, he has chosen to send them to New York City, Washington, D.C., and Chicago, and there's a, a certain amount of uh, uh, politics and strategy involved in that. But rather than get caught up in a political conversation, the, the mechanics of it is that New York City, which has on its books a right-to-shelter law, is required by their own law to accommodate those people that get off a bus in the Port Authority of New York and provide shelter for them. This has caused a great expense to New York City and an operational 
nightmare in terms of handling this kind of an, an, an infusion of people. Ultimately, after a year of doing this, this isn't something that's happened a couple of months ago, uh, Mayor Adams has determined that he cannot handle all of it within the bounds of the city of New York, and therefore you now have placements. There have been placements in Poughkeepsie, in Newburgh, uh, now in, uh, in Albany, outside of the city of Albany, in an adjacent town. Uh, and there's discussion that placements may occur elsewhere in the state of New York, coming out of New York City, because they're coming out of Texas, being sent to New York City, and then out of New York City, they're relocated. The proper response to this has to be a nationwide strategy. It cannot be a couple of places take the burden, be it Texas and at the border states, or a New York, because New York City happens to have this law. We have argued before, we've said it, I covered the letter last week, that we've asked the federal government to establish a satellite immigration court here in White Plains, where we have a federal courthouse, to adjudicate these cases of people that are sent here to Westchester County and to the other Hudson Valley counties. Now, there's a court in Manhattan, and they can certainly deal with all of those who are still based in Manhattan. But we think if you're going to be placed in Westchester and Rockland, Putnam, Dutchess, Orange County, and so forth, you should have a, 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 an expedited adju um, adjudication, uh, adjudication of the case because they're a long way away from the border and they're a long way away from the big city. And, and we cannot wind up having uh, folks over an extended period of time like this. We've also argued for an expedited um, work arrangement so that people who are here, they say they're going to work. There are entry-level jobs that uh, go wanting. Uh, those who are here, citizens who are here, don't choose to work on those jobs. You see the signs up uh, in every diner. Uh, I tend to be a diner kind of guy, so I go into the diner. We need busboys. We need waiters. We need cooks. Uh, folks who are doing gardening work right now, this is the season for that to happen, uh, and there's not enough employees at that level. So uh, there are jobs available, and we would like to see the federal government allow us to have these folks be able to work. <clears throat> As a county government, we have certain normal responsibilities that we provide off the board. The two that come to mind most frequently, and there are other ones, one of them is the, uh, uh, the requirements at public health. Uh, we're told that the individuals who have gone through certain vetting at the border before their uh, waiting uh, adjudication have been vaccinated. But we make sure that there is a, uh, a checking to make sure they have been vaccinated, that we can verify, and not just for COVID, which is the most recent vaccination, but all of the childhood diseases that may or may not have been vaccinated against in a rural section of, of a country in Latin America or in one of these other uh, countries around the world where our standard of uh, health care is very different from the standard of health care that they have. So we are prepared as a county government to make sure that the people who are here are properly vaccinated, whether we administer the vaccinations or they were previously administered. We want to make sure that we prevent any spread of any diseases. That is our responsibility uh, and commitment to the existing residents of Westchester County. We also will use our county police to, to complement the local police in a community. Now, both the White Plains Police Force and the Yonkers Police Force, which are the ones involved in the two settings right now, are large police forces, very professional groups of people. The county backup is, uh, is available to them, uh, most likely not immediately necessary to them given the size and scope of who's here. But uh, we don't know if there'll be placements in smaller sized communities. A village may have a very small police force, may not have uh, all the manpower they need. The people they have are professional, but they don't staff up for this kind of a situation. So we're prepared to do that. Why do we do these things? Because the most common concern expressed by people who express a concern that isn't ideologically based is they're worried about spread of disease, they're worried about all these people working, they're worried about all these people going to commit crimes while they're here in our communities. Aside from what I might think, that these people who are seeking asylum did not come into the country illegally. They did not disappear uh, into the American underground uh, to do criminal behavior. They are tracked by the government. But nonetheless, we know that we've got to ensure that there's safety. We have to ensure that there's medical uh, facilities and then other programs that complement that. Rosie's reading program is a good thing. When we have uh, a bus system that provides some transportation, that there's transportation involved, that somebody's going to work and they need transportation to where they go to work, where they're going to start out with a couple of months uh, with some assistance from the county. The core philosophical disagreement exists in the society. If you're watching this and you believe that uh, immigrants should not be in this country, there isn't a thing I can say that will be satisfactory to you. I understand that. I'm not going to argue with you because we disagree. We disagree. 
And I've been given the responsibility to run this county government, not once but twice, and I intend to run it with a practical mindedness, the same practical mindedness that I showed in my 20 years in a business career in which I was responsible for producing result in a corporate setting and had no opportunity to argue ideologically, ideologically with my superiors, but I had to produce a result, and I did so during that 20-year career. That is the attitude I take into this. But I recognize that people have disagreements, and you can resolve those disagreements at the ballot box when it's time to vote for the President of the United States, the United States Senators, and the Congress members, all of whom have the policy-making responsibility on immigration. This is their prerogative. They, they hold that prerogative very closely. They don't want states and communities making up uh, decisions along these lines. Let me be clear, for any of you who might use the language about sanctuary county, we are not a sanctuary county. We said so specifically in legislation. We are not saying, come here, you're safe here no matter what you do. No, if you're here, by whatever circumstances bring you here, you're going to need to follow the law, and we will enforce the law. And we will enforce it without favor or fear to any individual. We expect you to follow the rules of our society while you're here. But if you follow those rules, if you work hard, we do not hate you intrinsically. And that may be an area where someone who's watching this breaks faith with me. They see people somehow as an other group of people. And it's been mentioned, Tom mentioned it briefly, it's been mentioned before. <clears throat> there was a time when, when people who in my family came here from other countries were viewed as the other. And do not kid yourself, do not whitewash history. Do not tell yourself that 100 and 120 years ago, if you have immigrant stock, that the immigrants in your family were welcomed here. They were not, they were hated. I am of Irish and Italian descent. I have a few other ethnicities involved in it. I can't speak for the experience of Asian Americans in this country. I can't speak for experience of uh, people who've come to this country who are Jewish from Eastern Europe, but I can speak for my own family. My ethnicities were hated when they came here. They were treated prejudicially. Over a hundred years, they've been accepted into the American society because those immigrants accepted the rules, followed, worked hard, got education, followed their career to the greatest extent. There were criminals in the immigrant populations of those days, and there may certainly be some criminals in this one. But we do ourselves a disservice to try to separate based on how we feel or how we're told to feel by whatever media we consume that somehow this particular group of immigrants are uniquely dangerous to America. They are as dangerous to America as every other group of immigrants have been dangerous to America. And but if you disagree with that, I respect that you disagree with it, but I feel that strongly. And my life experience has proven to me that I have met people who have come here from other countries and they embrace the American beliefs of free speech and fairness and hard work and dedication to making the lives of their families better. And it's on that basis that we try to manage the situation. I have no executive orders to write. Those executive orders are on the verge of being rejected by the federal court. And <clears throat> I, I think I'm the only county executive in the state that didn't issue some version of an executive order. And you will find in a short period of time that uh, that my strategy turns out to be the legal strategy, not because I'm particularly uniquely smart, but we apply a practical standard of management, business management to this issue, as opposed to the ideological standard, which is we don't want these people here. Do anything you can to keep them out of here. There is a macro problem. It has to be addressed at the federal level. At the level of the county government, we have to manage it. These two settings um, may not be the last two that we have. We have managed 1,000 immigrant children in this county just five years ago. They were placed here by the Trump administration at the time that the Trump administration were removing children from families that came to the border. You must remember this. And they kept the adults at the border and they placed the children in other parts of the country. I have no idea if those families have been reunited. But a thousand of those children were placed in Westchester County by the Trump administration and we managed it. There wasn't a lot of uh, 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 criticism in the public at that point in time. I guess it didn't reach the particular media outlets that are the ones that sort of gin up the criticism. Whatever. We managed that process. They were here six months, eight months. I'm not sure how long they were here in four locations. No incidents of crime, no incidents of spread of disease, nothing outrageous other than the, uh, uh, the reality that we had a federal program and we dealt with it as reasonably as we could. So I close uh, our update 
by highlighting that uh, we will update this particular issue uh, each time we meet. I will generally make it the last topic of the day. So uh, I would like for you to listen to what we're doing in the parks. I'd like for you to listen to the Reading in the Parks program, which is an excellent program. I'd like you to be aware that we honor our veterans and we have a major concert coming up to honor our veterans. I'd like you to, to realize that we're watching what happens in the state government and we're administering programs of all sort so that you understand the full scope and vision of this government and you don't distill this government into one single issue that might be the issue of the day. But we're all free Americans. You're entitled to your opinion and I'm entitled to mine. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. Thank you for watching and have a good day.